storyteller Ken Follett has sold more than 150 million books worldwide. Thank you very much. He's famous for The Pillars of the Earth and The World Without End, two novels that were set in the Middle Ages. His newest book is a little more modern. It's called Edge of Eternity. It's a final novel in the Century Trilogy series. It uses fictional and non-fictional characters to create storylines based on real-life events in the 20th century. And Ken Follett is here at the table sitting up very straight. <laughs> he just told us in the break that your wife called you and said, Ken, set up straight, so you're ready. <laughs> Thank you, Barbara. See, she's looking out for you. Right. Nothing so, is off the record. Kate. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, thank you, Barbara. So the book starts in 1991 and ends with the postscript uh, with the election of President Barack Obama. There's a lot of events to cover in that time. How did you decide what events you wanted to tackle and why? Well, some things were completely terrifying. The book's called Edge of Eternity because we all knew in this period of the Cold War that when we went to sleep, we might never wake up because if there was a superpower, nuclear war, we would all be wiped out. So that's kind of, that's the biggest thing. And the moment when we came closest to that was the Cuban Missile Crisis. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of the defining part of the story when mm -hmm. here, it, when in Washington, D.C. and in the Kremlin, minute to minute, a small group of men are making decisions that may mean that we're all dead. Mm -hmm. And you touch on civil rights, too. There's a big chunk of civil rights that I thought was so interesting. And I'm wondering the research that you did. This book took you two years to do, to write. Well, I felt I, I, felt I ought to visit some of the places where the great incidents of the civil rights era took place. And, uh, uh, and because the famous Freedom Rides took place on a bus, I decided that I would take the bus. Mm. Uh, so I got on the bus in Washington, D.C., and, um, and spent three days uh, going south, just as the Freedom Riders did when they went from, from integrated America to segregated America. And it was, you know, I thought I knew about that stuff. Mm. It, was a, it was such an emotional experience. Mm. And, and, you know, I'm not a crier. I don't cry very much. I don't cry easily. But to, to go to the, for example, the 16th Street Baptist Church yeah. in Birmingham, Alabama, where those four little, little girls, girls were, were killed, killed, actually, yeah. it's 51 years ago today yes. Yes. that that bomb went off. And stand next to the Wales window. I'm from Wales. I was mm. born in Wales. And Welsh people collected the money to replace the stained glass. And that was, that was terribly moving. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I hope I managed to put some of that emotion into the story. You say you learned some surprising things about Richard Nixon. Well, you know, in the 70s, I hated President Nixon. Everybody my age hated <laughs> President Nixon. Uh, and, but in doing the research for this book, I, one of my consultants was a, a guy who worked for Nixon, a guy called Frank Gannon, and he kept arguing with me and telling me how good <laughs> Nixon was. <laughs> and I really did learn. Nixon integrated the schools, Nixon brought the troops home from Vietnam. Nixon invented the Environment Agency, which is still in existence. These are all high on the liberal agenda. So I kind of had to revise my opinion. Actually, in some ways, Nixon was a great president. The great thing about your books is they're historical fiction. And so in these, this trilogy, it's five intertwined families. You, your first book, it starts off in World War II, right? World War I. World War I, right, World War I. And then you go all through the last, you know, 100 years all the way up to, to current time. And the great thing is, is that you, there's these great characters Characters you fall in love with, and then you sort of relearn history and all these things. What was the most surprising thing to you? The most Other than the Nixon and certainly the civil rights stuff that you the learned. The most surprising thing, I suppose, when I, the, the second book in the trilogy is called World Without End, and it's mm -hmm. about the Second World War. And I suppose, even though we think we know what the Nazis did, the horror of, of uh, what the they had a program for killing handicapped children. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that until I did this research. And I guess even more than some of the more familiar stories about the Nazis, that, that, was, that was a terribly grim thing to research. Mm -hmm. Ken, what do you like to do for fun? Mm -hmm. We know you don't <laughs> like to cry, but you're so official. I love your accent. What do you like to do for fun? If I came over on Saturday, mm -hmm. what would we be doing? 
Well, I play bass guitar in a rock band. <laughs> no way, do you? Yeah, I do. Yeah, uh, <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's what they call a hobby band. You know, all everybody <laughs> in it has another job. Band. Okay. Uh, but uh, it's so we play blues and rock, and every Monday <laughs> night uh, we play in a rehearsal studio, and then now and again we play in public. And we're going to Frankfurt for the book fair in a, in <laughs> like a couple it. of weeks' time, and we're going to play at a party there. And if you're right. 10 o'clock, it's the Orange Peel Club. If you're in Frankfurt, come All on. All right. We, can we have a lot of viewers in Frankfurt. Yes. Yes. Ken Follett, thank you. <laughs> Pleasure, thank you. All right.